This conference will now be recorded. Okay, um, it is, uh, let's see, August 10th, 2020, and is now 6.10 p.m. Uh, this is the meeting of the uh, planning board of the village of Pittsford, and this is a workshop session to discuss some of our notes and recommendations regarding the active transportation plan. And in particular, this meeting, we're going to be reviewing some draft documents that have summarized some of our previous discussions. And uh, hopefully, we'll uh, revise the documents and forward them along to the Active Transportation Plan Committee for their consideration. Uh, with that said, we are having a virtual meeting tonight, uh, complying with orders of Governor Cuomo in light of the uh, pandemic of coronavirus. And um, we are meeting, Village Hall is closed, so we are meeting virtually via this video conference. And there is a link to this video conference access uh, on the Village website that any member of the public can use to join and observe the video conference. Um, so with that said, I'll make a motion to open the meeting, noting that all five members of the planning board are logged in as uh, to the video conference. And currently, it looks like no members of the public are logged in. So do we have a second? Second. How do you vote? Aye. 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 Okay, let the record show that was unanimous consent among all five planning board members to open the meeting. Okay, um, I have a screen share here, which is a write-up of our notes on the active transportation plan so far. And this is only cover, they're primarily covering pages, I believe it's 75 to 96, which is the sections that were most relevant to the village. Uh, we did not cover the, some of the background sections and the town specific sections um, in our comments. Um, so I worked on typing these up and then handed them off to Susan and Justin Lightgib, and they worked on revising them and copy editing them. And the point at this point is to go over them as a group and see if there's any additional revisions that need to be made before we send them along. Any initial comments from anybody on the process here? We good? Good. Just um, uh, a quick comment. So um, I've got a separate document. I'll, I'll share that link now so I don't forget. Um, and I'm not sure how many of you are going to have luck uh, clicking onto that. But basically, um, those are the LWRP policy um, recommendations that are from Justin's notes on two separate meetings that I combined together and, and just did some very minor type editing on there. Um, but, you know, let's let's go over the um, ATP notes first that uh, Justin just shared. Just wanted to get that out there as the other the other source that we'll be looking at. Yep. So that's document two and document three. There's this draft document that talks about what are the minimum safe widths for bike lanes and so on, um, considering some of the various standards documents out there. We have time to get into that. We can. I know most of you haven't had a chance to see that yet. I just emailed that around short, immediately before the meeting. But if we have time to get into that, that would be, I'd be curious to hear people's thoughts on that. Um, okay, so and, and Mr. Lightgib, I have a copy of your document as well. I saved it as a Word document. So if you want to great. do that as a screen share, I can do that. Okay, great. Okay. Um, so Joanne and uh, Dave, have you had any chance to look this over? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Okay. Pretty much in full. Um, I thought it was really well done. And, um, obviously, the editor's note will disappear. <laughs> Um, starting from the just just one very uh, brief comment on the Spanish. I think we lost a couple of um, uh, accents. Yeah. In the translation here, and I can yeah. add those back in. 
I'm not sure what the best way is to to do that. I don't know who's got that. Um, I can just put it in the. So, um, what is the source version of the document? Is did you? Um, I don't know whether Mr. Lightgib or Miss Loda worked on it. I think you use Pages, Susan, and Justin. Yeah. You typically use Google uh, documents. <clears throat> Yeah, this is. Um, I, I think Susan did most of the work on this one. Um, these, the the first part here, were a couple of recommendations that I had kind of put together and, and sent over to Susan, and then all subsequent edits are are hers. And I haven't had a chance to go back and, and look through all of them. Okay. Yeah, I, I know that I lost all the uh, Spanish language accents, but um, no big deal. I was kind of going quicker, right? Sure. <laughs> so yeah. I, I I have your original document, so I can put them back in. Okay. But are we all in favor of? Uh, I mean, I don't speak Spanish, so um, I can order a little bit in Spanish food. But um, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to defer to Justin like a you know, and uh, just say this, if your text does what you say it does, then I'm all for it. Great, thanks. Yeah, I um, so just to to clarify, um, I had read over this and and it didn't sound quite right. I mean, we're we're basically looking at um, the the Spanish translation specifically mentions the Civil Rights Act in uh, 1964, whereas the English doesn't. Um, the meaning there is pretty much the same, um, but the uh, the problem with the Spanish translation is that it um, is said that there's not going to be discrimination if there is federal funding, whereas in the English it says regardless of whether or not it gets federal funding, um, there won't be any discrimination. So that was an important oversight. Um, and so I, I modified this, and then I also sent it to a, a native Spanish speaker on our staff um, who polished up my Spanish. So I think with the accents, it should be good to go. And more I faith, guess you have more some very fluent English. Spanish people on your staff since they live in South America. <laughs> right. <laughs> Surprisingly, I was able to read it. I never could have put it together, but I could read it. <laughs> cool. Okay, so the notes uh, to the um, trustees are going to start with that comment from the uh, first page after the cover. Oh, let me scroll back up. Sorry, I sometimes forget that my screen is being shared. So we're so your question is let's let's move on let's accept this and move on correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. I'll go to the next page then. Sounds like that was a consensus to accept it and move on. Um, so any comments on this? Do you want me to scroll down a little bit? I've got oh. that up on my screen here too, just. So, um, um, so Justin, um, like I've suggested, um, language that the LWRP, um, should be considered a complement to the ATP, and I really think that um, it is, is not quite right. I mean, it's a regulatory document. Um, uh, so the, uh, the ATP has got to comply with the LWRP. So I thought it was important to um, include some language from the LWRP and, uh, and firm that up. I mean, there's a lot of, um, um, you know, there's certainly, you know, coordinated and the goals uh, are basically the same or, um, but, uh, you know, the LWRP is the, uh, like I said, is the uh, regulating document here. Yeah, I, I certainly agree with that. Um, and I, I didn't intend to make the LWRP subordinate to the ATP. In fact, my, my intention was the, the reverse, if anything. So 
Um, I agree with what you're saying there, Susan. Um, I'm, I'm still just parsing out the, uh, the change text here. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, I, I um, put in some language from the LWRP uh, introduction. So thank you, by the way, you two, for working on this. And Susan, it sounds like you guys have, well, both of you two have uh, put some decent work in. So thank you very much. Yeah, no, you know, I'm I'm like the, the LWRP head cheerleader. <laughs> <laughs> Which is great, I, I guess. So I, I get the, um, the regulatory part of this. I'm just wondering, um, you know, so it, we're, we're saying it's woven those goals that we agree with are woven throughout the LWRP. Um, the the part that I'm still not sure about in in this revised text is that um, what what I wanted to say is that the LWRP has unique uh, and significant content that is not represented in the ATP. I guess that's what I wanted to um, to emphasize there, and I'm not sure if um, if we're saying that in in this statement and just to be clear what's in red is what you were hoping that they would add to the atp well what's in red is what the um uh what is in the supplement that's in the supplement oh, okay. that's already there yeah, okay. that's okay. what I highlighted, correct? Okay, then all right, yeah. then I'm sorry. Let me let me figure out what I'm actually reading here. Okay. Right. So that was already there, which I we think is not strong enough, right? And then I'm right. sorry, Susan, I think I was reading the wrong thing, thinking it was yours. Okay. Um You may want to capitalize town and village. Yeah. Minor quibble. No. And, uh, Susan yeah. could could you explain, so the language you use in the suggested changes to the supplement, mm -hmm. were you thinking to use this language in that paragraph uh, that we were just highlighting some text on to use it in full or and just insert that into the supplement or to uh, parse it out slightly differently? Um, I, I would suggest uh, replacing the red text with the uh, the text that's right below it. Okay. Right. Let me go up and I'll, maybe I can fit both of these on the screen here. I mean, I can certainly add the first two uh, sentences, which is half of that. Um, but I guess it was the the, uh, the the last sentence, the LWRP policies underscore active transportation priorities uh -huh. um, I think it's the other I, th I think it should be the other way around I, I think I would agree with you so what if instead of underscore we strike that and use identify um, or or include, replace, underscore include. with include. Yeah, right. I think include is a reasonable. Okay, so include. Right. Green safety infrastructure. I, I don't necessarily mind what's in red other than that underscore part, because you're right, by underscoring, it's kind of giving the ATP priority, and if we just simply restate that it includes priorities, then well, so um, what bugged me about the, what's in red is that they've just, you know, the LWRP is a big document, and it does it does a lot more. There are kind of more calls to action than uh, what the uh, ATP has singled out here. And I think calls to action that even, you know, would fall under the category of active transportation, like all the, all the water stuff. So- What if we, okay. What if we were to continue on that statement? The LWRP policies include 
some active transportation priorities included in the ATP in addition to others that should be considered priorities or some, something that takes that sentence and just says, and there's other stuff in there too. I feel or, like we need to. Or you're writing below, you could simply, you could almost strike that sentence entirely and then continue on with what you wrote. That's what I'm thinking. Yes, I don't, agree. Don't strike the red, maybe just strike that one sentence. Mm -hmm. The last, right. so, well, I the think last it's, sentence, yeah. So you can replace underscore with includes or maybe change it slightly. The other one, the second, the another sentence is also bad. Um, it says uh, improving safety infrastructure and access for pedestrians and bicyclists. This is more of this really soft language. It's not guidance. It's right. not recommendations. Right. It's mandatory. Right. So you could just replace this whole thing is and say mandated by the LWRP. Uh, yes. So how about that last sentence is rewritten to be the LWRP policies include active transportation priorities that improve safety infrastructure access for pedestrians and bicyclists that is required to be in compliance with the LWRP, <laughs> to be in compliance, period. I, I, I still think that's a very narrow focus that's missing a lot of uh, it's missing, you know, water. <laughs> it's missing, it's missing the waterfront. Well, you are right about that. So this, uh, so that may have been a true statement, but it may have not gone far enough. Yeah. Right. 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 So replace that last sentence with what uh, Susan wrote. The suggested changes. Mm -hmm. The whole thing. I like it. All right. So now we're we're striking potentially the last two sentences. And replacing them with what Susan wrote. I mean, these are our recommendations. So, yeah. um, you know, I th I think if we're not going to be strong about this, I th I think the ATP is just going to you know continue to be watered watered mm -hmm. down. Yeah, I I agree with this uh, with what you're saying. Personally, I, I think this is the most important recommendation of all of them that we're yeah. making. Yeah, me, uh, me which too. is why I, I, I yeah. don't mind dwelling on it a little bit. I, yeah. I'd be okay with striking those last couple of sentences and adding in Susan's text. Um, I guess to me, the only thing that is missing there is as a reader, if I read uh, that revision, supposing we, we um, merge those two together, is mm -hmm. it clear that the ATP doesn't include a bunch of great stuff that's in the LWRP? And I don't know if we're making that point clearly enough because I would think as a naive reader, I go to the ATP and that's got everything that I need to know about active transportation and human powered mobility, uh, whereas that's not the case at all. Well, we don't know where it's gonna end up. So I think that's a separate discussion. So whether it complies or not with the LWRP is a separate discussion from saying it needs to, uh, uh, you know, active transportation as part of the LWRP. Yeah, I guess I'm I'm maybe jumping ahead there. Um, I agree we could separate those things. I, I guess I was jumping ahead of my mind and saying, well, um, you know, they're they're not going to go back and and modify all these recommendations. And there are still going to be pieces that are missing. So I'd yeah. like to make it clear here that um, the LWRP is still binding and it still needs to be read. Right. All right. So then, what if um, coming back to the the LWRP policies? What if one were to say the LW RP policies um, include active transportation priorities not included, or uh, no, requirements, skip priorities, requirements. The LWRP policies include active transportation requirements that are not included in the active transportation plan, right? And just leave it at that yep. and then go on to what Susan wrote. Sure, sure, that are not entirely incorporated in the active transportation plan or something like that. And we could even be more specific and say, uh, you know, not included in the first draft of in the um, uh, text of the active transportation plan outside of the amendments or something if we wanted to leave space for the amendments to include a bunch of this stuff. 
Right. Let's just revise here's my suggestion. Let's just revise this on the fly. So we're okay. talking about just deleting these last two sentences, correct? Uh, yeah, the way they're yes. written. Yep. Uh, no, Justin, we're changing the second to last sentence to the LWRP policies include active transportation. Um, Say requirements. Requirements that are not included in the first draft of the ATP. Okay. All right. Well, do we want to say first draft? Because this may actually make it into the final draft. So wouldn't we say the LDRBRP policies include active transportation requirements that are not referenced in the ATP or that are not referenced in this document? Yeah, I don't know. This, this is actually, they, this was their attempt to recognize the LWRP. That's the supplement. Uh -huh. Right. Um, so it's and, part of the document. So I think it should end with uh, include active transportation requirements that are not included in this document. I think the, the way that Justin just put it there is okay, too, because that's kind of what I'm trying to get across. We don't know what the amendments are going to look like once they adopt this yeah. thing. So all we can really say is it's not in the 2019 ATP. Yeah. Sure. Right. Or 2019 ATP or 2020 supplement. And then well, the I, supplement I, draft one. I, I don't think they're going to actually amend. Um, I'm thinking here. Well, I think that's a separate statement to, that for us to make is that the what's before us is like you said we don't know how they're going to change it so i i think first of all we send the comments along and then we see how they change it and then we decide if it's good enough i think that's how it kind of has to go yep. but we're going to make a statement that the, what's currently before the planning board um needs changes uh, that's a good statement to make as well But making that statement before we have the public hearing is also another thing. It doesn't sound good to me. Agreed. Thank you. So where did that leave us, Justin Bleedstra? Uh, what do you want to do, do with this highlighted sentence here that talks about improving safety? Let's, uh, so I guess where I'm at is let's not say anything yet, whether it, we could say the 2019 version, what, uh, did not um, include the LWRP requirements, but saying everything doesn't, I think, is a little presumptuous at this time. Okay. Could one take that last sentence and instead of saying the policy guidance recommendations of the LWRP, just simply say the LWRP policies? Oh, no, no. At the very end. What, very end of what? That sentence. So strike the the policy guidance and recommendations of the LWRP, and instead say is woven throughout the LWRP policies. I don't okay with that. Nope. No. No. But it doesn't go far enough. Yeah, I I I thought we were striking that sentence. All right, let's strike it. So, per Susan's comment of it not including, you know, water, active transportation on the water, it it's, seems to be not quite good enough. So okay. We're not just talking sidewalks and and bicyclists. So we're striking that. Yep. And change. So we'll make this black now that we're okay with that. I suspect this is two different fonts. Of course. Okay. That's Susan, you'll be all over that, right? A little bit. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So is this how we want it? And then um and then include the rest of this. Does anyone have any other changes? 
Could you the, identify? Um, oh, I'm sorry. I see where the quotes are coming from right now. The LWRP. Never mind. Yeah. Um, the last sentence um, of the new text seems to be a little bit redundant now with the last sentence of the first paragraph. So we're mm -hmm. saying that the LWRP goes beyond uh, the ATP 2019 version. Um, and then we're just saying at the end, it kind of weakens that statement. It says it aligns with it. Um, I wonder if we could just kind of combine those two, you know, take the last sentence and say that um, further LWRP policies align with active transportation priorities um, in a way that goes beyond the ATP 2019 draft or something by promoting. If we said that there, then maybe we don't even need the last sentence, the first paragraph. And what about a strong statement? So I like. I like uh, the first, I like trying to keep them separate. What if we said instead further LWRP policies, which align with active transportation priorities must be considered separately or something to that effect, where you, you use that second part to identify the need for them to look at it separately than the ATP. And then you use the first part to just simply say that, you know, there's some stuff over there. And then the second, the second line is, making sure they go look at it. Um, I'm not sure I like the word witch in here, but... Right. Um, I, I mean, I'm okay with just last sentence as it is. Uh, it sounds like some other people okay. had a, a few other criticisms they want to make or wording changes. So if someone wants, I guess I'm not, I'm not quite sure how to, how to improve it. I think we're making the right point here. I, I think it's, uh, I'm, I'm probably just being too nitpicky. I think it gets across the right message at this point. Yeah, I wanted to uh, be very specific about connectivity to the waterfront. Um, yeah. and the traffic calming measures, I mean, uh, but, um, what, so Justin, uh, uh, Leister, why don't you glom those two together? And, uh, I don't know if you want to keep them as separate paragraphs, maybe that's a good idea. And then we can, uh, you know, let that sit and take a look at it after we've gone through other stuff. Um, you know, the other thing I was gonna say, um, one additional, we could add an additional sentence is um, improving connectivity to waterfront areas is a key component that has been omitted from the January 2019 active transportation plan. Sure. I can type that in here. I'll type it in and you guys tell me if you want to revise it. Yeah, I, I think that's I think that's fine. I guess when when I was saying that I thought the LWRP was complementary to this, um, it's kind of a way of of saying that as well, while allowing the ATP uh, committee members to save face. You know, it's not that they omitted it or or forgot about it. It's just they didn't go there because this is already done well in another document. But I, I think there are a lot of ways to express that, and I'm I'm fine with this too. So yeah, I do, do you want to include this last sentence or no? <laughs> Could you read it, Justin? It's really small. Okay, promoting connectivity to the waterfront areas is a key component of LWRP that is emitted from the January 2019 Active Transportation Plan. Uh, I wouldn't say omitted. It's not like they, you know, they took something out. I just maybe say that you know is uh, is missing <laughs> or is... not considered. That is not right. considered in the right. 2019. Right. Not not considered. Yeah. And that's fine. It's it's passive, but intentionally so. I, yeah. <laughs> right, right. Now this is yeah. where when you when we put this before 
the boards, are they going to look at that and take offense? And might they then start to rework the whole thing? I mean, I'd much rather have them take this, copy and paste it and say, okay, we're, we're replacing paragraph X in the current amendment with this, right? And if they have to go in and reword it and do additional work, the likelihood of that may be lower. Is there a way to say that again, just a little bit softer? Because um, I think they probably considered it to some extent, and maybe they just hit some roadblocks. So wh um, what if? In go ahead. So I, I, you know, I've ta I've talked to uh, you know a couple people who were on it. Um, they they didn't read it. You know, this was a this was a miss. Um, yeah. Uh, so, um, you know, and this gives them a heads up, I think, to our, uh, you know, to our consistency with you. Right. And, and plus, there are two people on the committee who have, who wrote the LWRP. Right. And, you know, and other people who have, you know, done LWRP reviews. So, um, I'm digging in on this one. Uh, what you know, democracy rules, but um, I think I it was. So I respect that. What if we just entered sufficiently or something before addressed? So the LWRP that is not sufficiently addressed. They, they don't even, they don't use the word LW, LWRP a single okay. time. All right. All right. I'm going <laughs> to give it plug and play. Plug and play. Right. Okay. They We're not going to be soft. They yeah, don't they gonna... say the Erie Canal like once. Yeah. All right. <laughs> do we want to, okay, so now that, let's say we're done here, do we want to take and tell them that on page uh, 104 of the ATP and 2020 supplement, uh, page 11 reference, replace A with B, or do we want to let them go find where this should be? Uh, it's referenced. It's on, uh, it's on their, um, Right here is it says it. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah. It's page, page eleven. Okay, perfect. All right, I'm good with everything. All right, that's. And I'm, then in terms of the um, and then in terms of this, we have this last sentence that says that was not inside here. So then they can, if they want to address it in the supplement, then they say this will be addressed in the supplement. This is the supplement. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, this is the supplement to the supplement. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. I'll have this text. I'll forward it on to, to Susan. I, well, I'm good with it. I'm good. I'll just send it to you right now. I'll just send it to you stuff in spurts if you want. Or do you want me to just compile everything? No, that's good. That's all right. However, okay, so that's good. Page 44 under opportunities. Sorry, Justin, while you're editing this, if you want to copy and paste the Spanish text in the sidebar, that should have the accents that transfer over, maybe. Uh, I think that's beyond my um, what I can do quickly right now. Okay, no worries. I don't know where, where that is. Is that in your document? Uh, no, it's just in the chat sidebar of GoToMeeting. If you click oh, on the, the message bubble, bar. yeah, it's oh, got all sorts oh, of stuff. I didn't open that. In there. <laughs> no, it really doesn't have anything. Wow. I can't read that. <laughs> oh, gee. All right. Here is what Susan is getting. Okay. I don't know if I can zoom in on this, but this is what you wanted, right? Uh -huh. And you got, I see it has some of the uh, yep. the stuff That's in good. there. I'm not sure the spacing is right, but. Looks good. And just because I can't stand three fonts in one document. Yeah, I'll I'll do it. Oh, there you go. I have a question for you. Uh, existing ATP page 11, existing policies. That's the uh, supplement. Uh, yeah, okay. So 
Do we want to reference that's page three of the supplement? Or no? Doesn't matter. Uh, page eleven is fine. Okay, never mind. It's it's I just use I just use the supplements uh pagination. Yep, I agree. Okay. So page forty four. Supplement page seventy-eight. Um, this, I believe, goes back to the ATP. Not. Are you looking at page forty? Uh, page forty-four. Yeah. So, so just as we think about how we related this to them. Uh, yeah. So now the, the next section says page 44 under opportunities. That's actually page 44 of the master document, not page That's 44 right. of the supplement. That's right. Okay. Yeah. So basically, okay. under here, you're going to have some text that says the following are comments on the okay. January 2019 active transportation plan document. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. So as we use the page pagination, just make sure they know if we're doing it in the supplement or the master doc. Got it. So we need a little section header there, yeah. Yeah. But I agree with that comment on page 44. That sounds good to me. What What's the reference though there to supplement page 78? Uh, I think they included it. So some of the things they that we said, um, in page 78, this is in the supplement, they do talk about um, a traffic signal at State Street and Train Place. Yeah, I see that. Okay. Yeah. So I, I decided, you know, unless things were practically word for word, um, I would I would keep our notes, um, you know, pretty pretty whole. Yeah. I'm just wondering, so how are we connecting uh, the Monroe Avenue Main Street intersection to the uh, State Street Chain Place intersection? Why are they, right? Because page 78 of the supplement is talking about State Street Chain Place. Um, right, this is, so these are, these are our notes. Uh, and we're talking about the four corner intersection, but um, yep. improving pedestrian space. Oh, I see what they're saying. Okay, you know what it is? It would be under page 44, we could add that opportunity. And in the supplement, it would it's referenced on page 78, that pagination, that they're inserting another one into the improving pedestrian space. I suspect right. that's where they could also add this. Okay. Right. So again, I um, if they if the supplement addresses something that that uh, coincides with our notes, I, I wanted to leave our notes. Uh, I wanted to leave our notes in. So I, I'll take that supplement, page 78, out, I guess. OK, well, hold on. First of all, the stuff on page 44, it was based on community input at these information sessions. So amending that doesn't really make sense. So that's something that happened as community input. That's not actually part of recommendations. This is just background. Um, yeah. Okay. All That's right. Good. I'll I'll take it out then. Mm -hmm. I think we have it somewhere else. Yeah, I I think this we can take this somewhere. Yeah. Yep. So what if we just focused on page seventy eight and mm -hmm. under improving? Would it be under improving pedestrian space or curb improvements? I'm pretty sure it's in there somewhere. What, the Monroe Ave crossing? Or, no, getting rid of the, of the uh, rate turn lanes. Right. 
But the last paragraph on page 78 talks about it. They're keeping it in mind for the future. Well, they're saying remove uh, all right on red turning movements, but not the lanes. Ah. So we could extend that. We could change the turning movements and lanes. Right. Yeah. Is that and yeah. lanes there? Yeah. Well, I, I think all you need to do is just say uh, revise page 78. Get rid of the discussion of supplement. Sure. So say, uh, you know, remove all turning lanes at Four Corners Intersection, Monroe Avenue, and Main Street in the village. Right. So, so remove page 44 under opportunities. Yeah. Yep. And just say ATP page 78. Right. Yep. Yep. And by doing that, we can get rid of the supplement page 78 reference to. So I think this is what we we're talking about doing. I don't know if you guys can read this. Yep. Well done. Now That's on good. page 78, where would that go? Would it be a number 12 under signalization or would it be an additional, um, where would we put that recommendation? Number 12 is the recommendation to have stoplights at State Street and Shown Place. All right, so then this would be a number 13. And it would replace that that final paragraph, maybe. But it would replace, well, I think this would be a separate item. We could say under signalization, we can add this. It already says the prohibition of all right turning movement is another uh -huh. consideration. Exactly. Uh, so we'll just maybe. add it to uh, remove all turning lanes. Yeah, just add it, uh -huh. add, add it, yeah. Right. And, and that particular statement, the prohibition of all right on red turning, that is a comment that would be throughout the entire village. Yeah, that looks Whereas broader. This, this recommendation is specific to Four Corners. Yeah. And I, I, I think if we took this little comment and we suggested it to be a number 13, for example. Right, and, and still leave that last paragraph. You're right, Dave. The last paragraph. Yeah. yeah. good. Because by numbering it, it's a specific recommendation. Right. And then we don't have to worry about the future consideration and evaluation and all that other stuff. And uh, by giving it a 13 number, we just drop it in a supplemental. We're done. Yep. So number 12 is not there because number 12 is on the supplemental of the supplemental. <laughs> Okay. I think that's good. Good. All right. Yeah. Next that's thing good. is we had page 51 here. 
page 50. Is this from the supplemental? No, 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 from the plan. Um, so maybe, the, so sorry, this should precede page 78, right? Yeah, well, you have to reorder them. So you yeah. obviously want them in order, but I'm fine with this comment. Yep. Yeah, we had we talked a lot about that. Yep. The question is, is where so that page fifty one reference, that's in the supplement, right? No, that's no. in the main yeah. ATP, and that's about a section about missing sidewalks. So I'm saying when you do yeah. add sidewalks, um, and yeah, that's something that we had discussed as a group, and I just figured yeah. it might be able to be wedged in there. Yep. Yep, got it. I agree. Sorry, I was trying to open other versions of this. Okay, so this is where uh, be, this is where we want to reorder them a little bit, obviously. Yeah. But so this this sidewalk gap on page fifty one will come before our page seventy eight or whatever it was. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, that's good. They can drop that in wherever they want. Right, and then and then page seven, 74, 76, seventy four, seventy six. Those will precede. Uh, Page seventy-eight as well. Yep. yep. Yeah. Um, okay. All right. Page seventy-five. And we had talked about, uh, you know, this is one that we talked about in our meetings before, and uh, I, I didn't realize initially that it actually said to do this in the LWRP, so it's a good place to give us some credit there. Yeah. Should we add uh, improve bicycle and pedestrian safety and connectivity? Sure. Pedestrian safety and connectivity. Yeah. Yeah, safety is a big thing. Uh, I drive. What if I drive down towards the dairy? Um, from at least from my end of the village. I guess we're all on this end of the village, uh, on the south end. Um, but th there's always uh, cars flying past while pedestrians are turning across the road or bicyclists are turning across the road. People rarely stop. Someone stops one direction, doesn't stop the other direction. It really is not good. It's a very heavily crossed uh, section, both ends of this are. Right, right. So I agree with adding safety. Right, and you know, there, uh, depending on what you guys think, but you know, the the bridges um, are the uh, State Street and um, and North Main. Those are the main thoroughfares to get to the canal path. And um, and that's what most of that traffic, most of that you know pedestrian and bike traffic is doing, is getting getting to the canal path. And um, I you know I, I just think it should be stated that you know one of the dynamics of village traffic is to get to the canal path. <laughs> and uh, you know and there are these two bridges that are just so unsafe. You know, you know, for people for people to do that, I, it would have been good if they they had some study that really, you know, said you know where are people going on on bikes and taking a walk. Uh, I think that was something else in the LWRP is they recommended yeah. a traffic study uh, yeah. for the for 
at the end of shown place to see okay. what what to do. Right. But any, anyway. You know, we talked about um, implementing crosswalks that are visually and texturally different from the roadway. I, I think that's somewhere. I didn't find it. Um, so but anyway, it talks about um, all of that stuff and leaves out the texture part in that first paragraph on page right. 75. Right. Jo Joanne, a little further down in this, um, there are like two page 78 comments. And one says, uh, um, provide um, public visual act. Oh, no, sorry. For forget that. That wasn't I think the same. It was in our comments on the LWRP, is where we commented on this. Yep, yep. That's right. Sorry. I think it's the, that's the document number two. Yep. Okay, let me go back here. So, we covered this one here. We covered this one, next one here. Stoplights at each end of chain place. Everyone's good with that. Next mm -hmm. one, page 76. Any comments on this one? Replace or move larger electrical boxes from head height at Sutherland and Jefferson. It seems to make sense to me. Sure. Okay. Now, next one here. How do I get this stupid bar to go away? Justin Leadster, I think this is yours, isn't it? The document here? No, this, this comment. On uh, um, the boxes, no, the next one, 78. Yeah, so creating yeah. a moment when all the lights are red. Is this also, is there a separate comment, uh, saying that? Oh, we, we looked at this, the um, beg buttons, we had talked about removing those for something that just changes it automatically. And that's already addressed in the ATP. Mm -hmm. I found yeah, talking about it. Susan, here's a typo. This is corners. It should say corners. Oh, <laughs> thank you. So this number 78, again, for signalization, this should be number 14. So somehow amend it if, to the extent that we include this exact language, it doesn't matter. But I would say, uh, like we did with number 13, say number 14, and then whatever we decide. Yeah. Yeah, this is where they had said on page, um, I guess those village comments again on page 42, provide advanced pedestrian crossing technology. But it doesn't say what that technology should do. <laughs> 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 Add a robot to do something. Uh, okay, well, this first comment here, um, what changes are we making to this? We're adding it. Oh, I don't know what changes we're making. Other than changing corners to corners. 
Oh, uh, instead of number 78, keep it at page 78, but then put um, add number 13 or number 14. 14. Okay, so say page 78, um, add number 14. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't necessarily know if we need the second sentence. It may or may not be duplicative of other challenges that have been expressed previously in the document. I, I agree with it. I just don't know if we need to say it again. So it is difficult to, yeah, that could be omitted. I don't think it. Mm -hmm. Just to clean it up and make it very like straightforward and a little tighter, like maybe some of the other ones. Um, I'm good. You know, I'm as I'm looking back at this now, I'm not sure where it does say uh, eliminate beg buttons. I think the advanced pedestrian crossing technology is one of the community recommendations, and it's not at all clear what that would do. Do they say remove beg buttons? They, I, I think we discussed that, right? And there's no term beg button in the whole ATP. Do they call them something else? Um, advanced there's only two instances provide advanced pedestrian crossing technology okay that's the community thing that you were talking about yeah and that's it no that's it. um okay that's kind of a i feel like that's sort of a big one you know it does seem to be a, a standard um best practice for active transportation where you have you don't have the need to push the buttons that's become really clear especially during the pandemic when you've got to find an article of clothing to push the button with <laughs> but even without that you know it's like you really just want stuff to favor pedestrians rather than deferring right. to traffic well so either big buttons or something that's automatic when you come up to the crosswalk or at least a four-way stop like what we're referencing here is there a way to uh, recommend either here yeah i think you could a, um, my, uh, revisions document here yeah i see the revision what if uh ad number 13 was enhanced pedestrian safety at main street and state street either through the installation of advanced crossing technology or uh, changing all signaling to uh, all red all the time or something like that. I mean, that's not good English, but what if you gave an option of either or here? Well, I think we want, uh, in the, one of the comments, and we just, I don't even remember when we discussed this, we discussed it a while ago, is uh, creating gaps in traffic is needed so that crosswalks down the road to work. So signaling technology there, wouldn't address that okay i'm you okay with say, yeah so we, oh this sentence we're going to delete correct we're going to delete this sentence right here yeah yes okay um and then we could just say um eliminate buttons the requirement to press buttons to um you know to use the, the crosswalks i don't know what the term for that is Honestly, if you have signaling at four corners that's all red all the time, then you, you don't even need the button. That's Let right, me... just automatic. Yeah, so right. you, you could just leave it like it is. There's a Strong Towns article on this one about removing beg buttons. What are they, what's the term they use? I think Renee has even mentioned this in meetings too in the past, so it's something that I'm surprised is left out of the ATP. I feel like it should be there somewhere. Mm -hmm. Pedestrian signal. Hey. Is this sentence okay or is it superfluous? Um, I don't think we need it actually. And they're not really beg buttons. They don't alter the signaling at all. They just, hey. right. They don't do I don't quite know how it works. 
So I, I, I don't know if it makes a difference whether I push them or not. You know what I think it does? I think it takes away the right on reds. Or I think it, excuse me. No. Uh, no, the only thing it does is when you push that button, the next time the light turns, then you get a walk, don't walk sign. If you don't push the button and the light turns, they, you don't get a walk sign. That's right, it creates the gap, it creates the gap. No, uh -huh. there's no gap. It just it just lights up the walk, you know, you have 25 seconds. That's it right. just signals that sign to come on. Otherwise, it doesn't come on. Right. Yeah. It would be neat if the beg button, if there were I, one. Were I asked for that in the beginning. The DOT said no. <laughs> if it could keep it red while that was going. Yeah. Right. Well, well I'm okay without that line there. Um, okay. So this highlighted sentence, I'll delete it. Yeah. I think we just tell them to have it all red all the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> make the car just press a button to make it go green. <laughs> we'll see what yeah, like <laughs> All right, so that's that. Yeah, we're drunk with power here. <laughs> hey, it says where pedestrians and cars conflict, we have to favor pedestrians. Yeah. Right. yeah. How about pedestrians and DOT? Fun the DOT. Yeah. I'm joking, but um, okay. So, any other changes to this one? No, I just want to. Could I go back to the other one for just a second on that same document you were just on? Go up. To where we added the word safety yeah let me figure out where um it's uh page 75 justin yeah it's your, it's your amended document scroll yeah. up just a little bit yeah okay you're right there um this is recommended in the lwp and would improve uh, by adding stoplights are, are you improving connectivity Meaning, can we just focus on the safety aspect? Does it actually enhance connectivity? Well, it would allow pedestrians and bicycles to get to the canal. Right. Okay, good enough. Oh, yeah. Good enough. Okay. Well, right now yeah. it's, a bit of, it's a bit of work to get there. I, yeah, I guess by having stoplights, connectivity enhance, is increased, I guess. Yeah, because I think people will feel safer, you know, yeah. about yeah. the attempt. Okay, sounds good. So now we're on um, the next 78. <laughs> yeah. Place number nine. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we talked about this for a while. The plan is much better fleshed out in the comp plan. So yeah. there's no reason to do an insufficient job of describing it here. Yeah. I agree. Um, sorry. So are we on to the number 79 now? And do we want to drop and paste that page 78 into the document, Justin, that you're sending to Susan or no? Um, which one? That one right there, the page 78, replace recommendation number nine. That's already in the document. I'm oh, just sending probably... changes, changes to this. Okay. So Susan, just take note that it's possible that there's things we want to submit that won't be in the amended doc that Justin's going to send you afterward. So this document is just going to be changes. What I'm sending her is just change. Just things uh, that are getting changed. Yeah. 
Yes. Okay. Right. So if, it, if it's not being changed, it stays in. Okay. All right. Moving on. But if you want me to paste, copy and paste the existing ones in here, I could do that, but that's just extra work. No, let's. That's better let's, done offline. Yeah, let's let's keep going. Okay, I, you know, this seems straightforward. Uh, so then the next one is the wider sidewalks on the bridge. Yeah, and that's tied into number 80 as well. So you want to put both of those on the screen because there's a, a part missing in the ATP. They have um, the, the center line is, um, they, they had a turning lane there for some reason. If you look at the Google satellite view, it's hash marked in the, in the middle of the bridge. So if you get rid of that, then you've got some more room for the sidewalks. Right. Exactly. I think Bob said the DOT is insisting on the turning lane. Yeah, well, I think we're we're trying we're uh, we're we're going to beat them up with the LWRP. <laughs> Good. Let's try. Let's try. Exactly. We don't need to be soft. We get to interpret it, not them. <laughs> I'm not sure that this is they're going to uh, be very willing to work with us, but we'll see. Don't know until you ask. Exactly. But you know this this just this creates a public record of what the community wants and at some point you know maybe we'll have the opportunity to um, talk to an authority who will recognize us yeah exactly and then then we have this on record the squeaky wheel gets the grease. A lot of communities probably aren't complaining about this stuff. And if we say there's safety issue and then there's an accident, right. I think the DOT is not going to look very good. I know. Yeah. Well, the other thing with the DOT is um, you just ask them, hey, where in your requirements does it state it needs to be a turning lane? And when they can't point it out, then, um, right. you know, it's something they're asking for that the community doesn't want. So why are they doing it? Right. And we have a demonstrated accident that already occurred because of such a thing. Right. That's right. Is there a photograph of that? Couldn't we you know, include that? <laughs> <laughs> we could at least include it in a, um, you know, maybe the planning board could issue a, a letter to the DOT and include a reference to that issue and what the community wants as a follow up. Right. And also tell the DOT we can invite them to attend a meeting and to get here they have to make a left turn at the end of the bridge. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go. Where are um, we? All right, so any changes to this on page 79 and 80? And Maybe bridge doesn't need to be capitalized. Maybe it needs to be bridges. So um, just to discuss it, I took a look at the, uh, well, two of the three bridges today. We know the one on North Main Street is too narrow. So whatever the width of the sidewalks are, they need to be wider. Uh, the one on State Street, which is at the other end of Shane Place, um, that one actually does have seven to eight foot wide sidewalks. Um, and I think there's actually room to expand that to 10 feet because there's a gap of say three feet between the edge of the sidewalk and the stripe on the road. Wouldn't you want that for a bicycle lane? Well, if it's 10 feet wide, you can use the sidewalk for both bicycles and pedestrians. Oh. At least that's I my think thinking. That, yeah, I think we should encourage bicyclists to where we can, not Stay to on the road. right on the sidewalk. Oh, you, so you 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 would not um, put them on the um, on the road. You, pre you prefer them on the road than the sidewalk. Yes. Yeah. I think bicycle commuters might prefer the road as well. Sure. Yep. Okay. Well, there's very little room to work with. If they put a bike lane in, we're going to get a smaller sidewalk. What? It, um, so having gone across that with the kids uh, this weekend if the bike lane was in the road and the paths for the cars were narrower 
I would be effectively closer in the road, right, than I would be if I tried to stay up on the sidewalk. Meaning, I, I would prefer with a family to have a curb, right, even on my bike going over if it's a very narrow path. If I if it feels like it's a, a funneling type thing, I, I'd almost rather. What if there's some way to put a railing up, like on the inside? And you had a walking path and then on the outside edge you had a bike path or there's some way by which you could curb out a bike lane away from a um, car lane hmm. uh, color some visual cues paint yeah. Pull up some of these pictures. Uh, okay. Yeah, okay. Here is the bridge in question. So yeah. this, this is the State Street Bridge. So this is about a seven to eight foot wide sidewalk here, depending on the section you're in. And then there's a short gap um, to the lane marker. There is a standard double lane here without the hash marks or turning lane in it. And then I believe on the other side here, it's actually a pretty narrow distance from the curb to the white line. So the, this side here, which is heading, this is heading towards the post office whatever direction that is. Mm. Yes. Um, Interestingly, so, it looks like they have a rumble strip of some sort between the white line and the curb, huh? Yeah, that might make a little bit of noise. But anyway, I don't think this is something you're going to desire to ride a bicycle on. Um, it's not, this might be three feet wide, but there's, what I said is there's no room to work with. You want bike lanes, you got to make the sidewalk narrower. Um, or you can make the sidewalk wider and make the drive lanes narrower in some way or another. Mm -hmm. So those are really all you have to work with. I, I don't know if um, making this, if, uh, there's no big section in the center of the road to take space from on this bridge is, is what I'm trying to point out. DOT I would agree. really not like us if we made it into a one lane bridge. Uh. <laughs> I guess what I'm saying is if you took if you took away a little uh, of the road and, and made a bike lane where the, the white stripe is in the curb, riding a bike on that, I'm already nervous enough just crossing on the, the sidewalk because it, it feels like it's a funneling system. So I, something should be designed there for the safety of pedestrians and bicyclists at the same time. I don't necessarily know if we have to come up with it. You know, how about if you took the curb out and kind of made a smoother transition before between the uh, the sidewalk itself and the, the curb. Because I, I agree with you. I think that curb, you can just see yourself hitting it and, you know, going into traffic. But maybe if it was a smoother, like a... Yeah. a, a, a well, I, I think the other thing is this separates cars from pedestrians. If it's icy and the car starts sliding, it'll keep them from jumping up on the sidewalk. Yes, and so you're seeing more and more winter bicyclists. Yeah. And if you had a curb that was at the farthest width from the edges you could get, then within that space, you could allow, you could stripe it for bikes and pedestrians, but it, you'd have a curb that is where the white stripe is, or maybe even a little to the left. And in, to your point, Susan, you could even get rid of the sidewalk. You like have it all be lower other than this one little curb or all raised. I almost like the idea of having it all be lower. Hmm. Maybe not, but. but it, well, let me it, throw it, another it, idea at you guys. Here is spinning around 180 degrees from the end of the bridge looking towards uh, Chase Bank. And this would be walking towards four corners here. So this is, um, again, this is standing at the, about, both of these are like from the intersection with Bowton Avenue. Um, it, we're talking about possibly expanding the bike boulevard to connect all the way up over the bridge. 
it seems like there is a gap over here, but there's room to make a much wider sidewalk if someone wanted to do that. And maybe it could be used, well, I don't know about moving the telephone poles, that might not work, but I'm just throwing it out as an idea. Could, uh, could we have a mixed path that goes across the bridge and further towards um, four corners in the village? Uh, bury the wires, you got the space to work with and it'll look nicer. Yeah. There you go, bury the wires. That's a good idea. Okay, so anyway, that's just something to think about. Um, I have a picture of the other bridge. Okay, so this is the one on Monroe Avenue. Um, so this one has a completely separate uh, sidewalk for the pedestrians to use. And then there's hash marks in the middle of the road. Uh, I don't know how wide that is. And I believe this is a three to four foot um, striped path on the side. And I'm sure Dave, you are not riding a bike with your kids uh, on, in that. Um, that's not really safe for bicyclists unless they're willing to narrow that hash section in the middle. And I'm sure they're going to tell us they can't have it, but they don't have any other bridge. Uh, so uh, the other bridge is just a, a you know like an 18 inch wide hash mark, and this one is a 12 foot wide hash mark. So this sidewalk here is approximately six feet wide, so it's actually a little wider than a normal sidewalk, which makes sense if you have railings. Question for you. Could they design the bridge in a way where the trusses are the width of the vehicle transportation? And then like this, they created a wide enough path on either side for our little bobcats to go over in the winter and to create a bike lane and create a walking pedestrian lane. Yeah, I mean, that's option, but we know rebuilding bridges is not cheap, so. All right, so uh, we're, we're working with what we have then. And in which case, going back to the original picture of uh, crossing. So that's this one. I'll, I'll go back here. I'll move this out of the way. If you wanna see him again, let me know. This is this bridge. Right, so if we assume the width of the bridge is the width of the bridge, and we're gonna work with what's inside of it, I wouldn't mind having some sort of railing that delineates between the crossing and the bike paths. It might not look all that great so maybe it's just really good striping and we leave it at that but again i i don't know if we have to come up with it as much as we have to just state more attention to detail here mm -hmm. yeah i would agree with you because we don't know i don't know what the plan is if they're going to rebuild the bridge completely and i think most of these are like 50 year bridges probably more than 50 years old then um and they have a blank slate then there's lots they can do if they're going to retrofit this then that's a whole different matter. That's right. So I think if we go back to your page 79 and 80, and you say wider sidewalks on the bridge are needed, um, we could instead say, if, well, I mean, sidewalks doesn't imply raised, but I guess it does. You could say wider pathways on the bridges are needed. Um, I mean, it, it doesn't matter. I mean, use sidewalks, it could end up being a sidewalk or something different. Uh, but I think I like how it's stated as I read through it again here. Yeah. I, there's only, a, there's a typo at the last sentence of the first paragraph. Oh, fro to four. Yeah. Oh, it's one of my classic mistakes but yeah i i like both of these and i think it draws attention to the fact that they didn't pay enough attention to the bridges and we're being fairly descriptive in what we want right you know what right. uh one thing i just noticed since we came down so hard on the use of consider Let's just take that consider out and just start with design these. Yeah. Right. 
Right. Good. Is suggestion as strong as recommendation? Um, well, I think this one is, um, there's two options. Have a sidewalk and a bike lane, or I sure think it was better before. Let me just undo what I did. Uh, so you could have a bike path and a sidewalk, or you could have just a mixed use path. Yeah. It's an either or here. Uh, let's see. Well, it, going back to Susan's point, though, for this page 79 one, we're pretty much telling them to do a wide sidewalk. Right. I think you can get rid of consider. If we end up getting an eight foot wide sidewalk on those bridges, I'll be thrilled, even if yeah. it's not like perfect. Yeah. So, yeah, for the page 79 comment, I, I would get rid of consider <laughs> and just put design these to be mixed use for pedestrians and bicyclists. I'm good okay. with that. Uh, sidewalks are suggested. Yep. So then design. Yeah, sure. That's good. That's good. Yeah, either way. Yeah, design bridges. Yeah, good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's good. Right. Yep. Good. Very good. Yep. And then page 80, the North Main Street, eliminate center lane. Yep. See, there is currently. Uh, I don't think any of the bridges can be safely crossed with the bicycle. But the North Main one, uh, North Main Street one is in particular. Yeah, none of those bridges can you have a bicyclist on the uh, sidewalk and a pedestrian. Right. And it, you basically just have to stop and get off your bike. Right. Because you can't be in the road. There's not enough space. It's not marked. Yep. Unless you're flying like a car. And this was for any other changes to this? Oh, next. Yeah. No, that's good. Is the text big enough for you to read, Susan? I when I have it at 180 percent here. <laughs> then I moved it out of the way. I'm I good. think you, a, you probably have a fairly small screen, I assume, Susan, on your mm -hmm. laptop. Yeah, you do have a pretty small laptop screen, right? You have a 13-inch laptop. Mm -hmm. Oh wow! You might be able to zoom in on the screen too, Susan. I can do that here. You might be I'm a okay. plus button. Okay. Yep. I'm, I'm yeah, go, in the go-to meeting, it shrinks down the viewable area, and yeah. I'm not sure if DOT is the right term here. I think it's ASHTO. Are there any bike lanes on that bridge? I don't think there are any bike lanes on the bridge, no. I even reference that they exist. Uh, right, eliminate the center lane on North Main Street yeah. Bridge, increase it with the bridge yeah. sidewalks. And uh, then um, accommodate bicycles. Right. Yeah, and cut and paste the same thing you did on the you know, one before. All right, just say accommodate bicycles according to NACTO standards. Now, why for this page 80 are we uniquely different than we were for the page 79 comment? I believe page 80 has the image of what they're doing. Yes, that's correct. Oh, I, all right, so this is relative to an image. Okay. 
let me go to that image. Eliminate the center line on North Main Street Bridge. Oh yeah, why is there, that is the funkiest conceptual design ever. Uh, that makes no sense. All right, that's why that's there. Uh, all right, so eliminate the center line on North Coast. Uh, increase the width of the bridge sidewalks, accommodate bicycles on the bridge to ensure bicycle lane width of approaching the bridge. Yeah, what is that turning lane even for? <laughs> Park. What is <laughs> Where are you going with that? <laughs> They're going to the meeting we're going to have with the DOT. <laughs> yeah. You're in that left-hand turning lane until you get to the hotel. To <laughs> Actually, no, you can't even do that. All you can do is turn on the Erie Canal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. You turn into the park. Yeah. Either you're turning onto the canal to, to go west or you're turning into the Port of Pittsburgh. So that that's for, uh, yeah, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Let that be on record. We've been in that meeting. We, we had a good chuckle over that already. I'm glad you enjoy it, too. <laughs> okay, good. Um, I have to the bridge. Okay, so here's how I rewrote this one. Um, so eliminate the center lane on the North Main Street Bridge. Increase the width of bridge sidewalks. Um, and so accommodate bicycles on the bridge and ensure bicycle lane width approaching the bridge uh, comply with NACTO, whatever, bike lane standards. So and we don't want three foot wide bicycle lanes just because that happens to be the width of the street. Because no one's going to use them, they'll ride on the sidewalks. Yeah. Okay. Um, in something like this, is it appropriate to to write like a commentary field that references are we going to have like a cover letter that references the importance of these things like for example this is just straight up wrong I mean, you you can't let this fly um when we put it like this if they read that uh all right they may go to it they may look at it they may realize the importance of it but how do we draw attention to it and still have it a nice clean recommendation should we have a cover letter or should we just say, here's our comments? Or should we put a little like editor's note at the end of this? This is very critical, it is wrong. <laughs> um, well, we also have the opportunity of attending their meeting when they're discussing this and we can emphasize that we say this is really critical. Okay, I'm good with that. Should we okay. flag it with a, uh, you know, something to indicate its importance here, so we don't leave it out? I mean, I, I think when we made the code recommendations, we had varying degrees of um, uh, strength of recommendation, right? And that got to be kind of a mess after a while on the spreadsheet. But maybe there's something we could do here too to organize them. Are we going to say note? Uh, this is a critically needed change. Or just critical error. <laughs> right? Change implies that they actually intentionally show it that way. I don't think anybody noticed it. I say this is a mistake in the <laughs> ETP <Yeah>. picture. <laughs> okay, I think if we, we, we that's good, we can move on. Leave it, Justin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
yeah, this is a critical All area. of them are serious problems. Bike lane widths that don't work, uh, turning lane where you can't turn. But for as much attention as we're paying to the bridge, if the DOT sees, well, look, they got all this room for a turning lane that doesn't go anywhere, what do we need to worry about a bike lane for? All right. Page 81, move recommendation, move back in. Quick question for you. Uh, the recommendation to remove back end parking, was that something in the LWRP or is this just our own comment? This, wow. yeah. this is a recommendation in the um, ETP to try back end parking in front of the rec center. And since they added so much parking space behind the rec center, we didn't feel that it was necessary. Well, maybe they, okay, we could, or we could have them use the back end parking and remove the parking lot. There we go. Yes. Okay. I hear what you're saying. So maybe here, um, just add to that, remove recommendation for parking, back end parking on Lincoln Ave, uh, number four, maybe reference number four so they don't have to look for it. And maybe reference the um, community center, no longer required or something like that. Sure. I can just put um, at the at the Spiegel Center. Yeah. Yeah, they call it the Community Center and the uh, ATP. Doesn't really matter which. Yeah, Community Center. The Lincoln Ave Community Center. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So now we're on to remove parking spots at Lincoln and South Main Street to remedy impaired visibility at the intersection. Lincoln and South Main. Yeah, right, Joanne. I mean, you have to pull out. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard to see. And I'm in a big car. I, yeah. Susan, no. you're in a little car. Can you see when you pull out of my street? No, if there's a car parked at the corner. No, you have to nose out. And then you've yep. got people who are, you know, coming. So it's a, it's it's, and you're trying to watch for pedestrians. It's yeah. not safe to have. I know they wanted extra parking spaces, and maybe it was even a, an attempt at traffic calming, but I don't think it's safe to have a space that close to the corner. Right, right. In right. fact, I think um, having spaces that abut uh, crosswalks. I, you know, how many times do you, do I go down South Street and you really have to slow down because oh, yeah. you have to look around the car um, yes. at, at the crosswalk to see if someone is, you know, is beginning to cross. You're talking about Sunday when all the people park there to go to church. Right. right. And somebody said that slows traffic. Well, <laughs> it sure does if you're going to bump into somebody. <laughs> Right. right. Yeah, there's a there's a fair point to uh, parking density on the streets would certainly slow traffic and. Um, but it also adds a danger. I mean, if you're trying to ride a bike in between a car that's parked next to a sidewalk and oncoming track, I, I don't know how you do it. You can't. Um, Justin, I wouldn't say site difficulties. I would say. Um, uh, hindrances or uh, obstructions. Okay. Okay. Well, again, they don't have. They can take it, um, or they don't have to. So everything's. Good idea. Yeah. yeah. So they good. Moving on. Uh, let's see. 
spike network recommendation. I guess it should have roots in front of roots 31. Yeah. 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 It would be a lot clearer. <laughs> oh, yeah. I thought those were page numbers at first. <laughs> okay. All right. I copied that the RTE route. Now we can stick in front of all of them. Right. That makes it abundantly clear. Sound okay to everybody? Yes. Yeah. All right, so now we have Bike Boulevard 123, Bike Network Recommendations. I may have missed the conversation on this part. Um, develop a parking master plan for the village central business district to reduce on street parking to create room for bike lanes. Well, is that suggesting more like parking lots? Um, I'd be shared parking agreements. Right. Where do we have more room to have shared parking agreements? Yeah, we don't really have room to build any more parking. We don't want anyone to build more parking. So if we're removing parking spaces and we want things to still work, the only option is to have people share our existing parking lots. Or, you know, for for people to, uh, there are a lot of parking spaces on side streets. But wouldn't that still be on street parking? So the way this this recommendation reads is it's it doesn't say on street parking on Main Street or on the major thoroughfares. It just says on street parking. Um, and so are, are we instead saying, um, you know, consider reducing on street parking requirements for the central business district with the goal to encourage on street parking away from Main Street and State Street or, or something that's to, to, to get bike lanes in those roads and you have to give up parking, but then it's got to go on street somewhere. How, how about just take out that first recommendation and leave it with develop a parking master plan Good. To rationalize yeah. parking. Good. Yeah. Okay, so what are we putting here? We're eliminating it. Eliminate, eliminate that, Justin, what you've that one, yeah. highlighted. Yep. Delete this one, page 81? Yep. yep. We're going to delete all of this? Yep. Yeah, because we there's a better recommendation, it the same, right? Right. It says it better in the next one down. Right. Yeah, and it leaves open the idea that the master plan is a separate group of, of people potentially putting their heads together to say, what do we really want? Right. And, you know, I know, Susan, you and I have talked in the past about how the parking requirements in the village are very restrictive for businesses outside of the central district. But in the same vein, we want to make sure that the central district has enough parking and, and somebody's got to come together and, and figure this stuff out. Yeah. Yeah, if we remove all the barn street parking, um, there's a lot of people that'll be pretty mad about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so maybe there's enough space, but I mean, I do enjoy periodically parking on street on Main Street. I don't know why I ever would when I can walk, but it's happened. It rains so many times, and on the side streets. Yeah, yeah. And there, I don't think there's ever been a time of day where I haven't been able to find a parking spot. Right. And I just want to comment. It was a couple of days ago, I was thinking, somebody had mentioned they were down to Chautauqua Institute. And then I was thinking about some of the uh, beautiful villages that I've been to and realized that 
when it's a really desirable village and location, I'm willing to walk. I don't need to park within Thank 50 you. or 75 feet. Right. And, and so if you create that walking active transportation environment, you don't need to have the parking right there. Right. Um, and you actually get potentially more density on the street when it feels safer for everybody to be there. All, all good. Yep. Agreed. Yes. People are used to walking at Park Ave, but not here, apparently. Yeah. Right. So, mm -hmm. OK. All right, so I think we're moving. So I read through all these and they all looked good to me. The quick question on number seven for the page 84 stuff. I know. <laughs> yeah. Um, yes, but it's really not an action item. Like, I don't know how to. Right. Right. Maybe that's, it, it's too open-ended where they wouldn't know what to do with it. So they would just strike it. So do we just strike it and hope everything else makes it safer? What, which one are you talking about? Number seven. seven. Yes. Number seven. Starting seven. Yeah. You want right. to get rid of it? Yep. Just seven. Just seven. All right. So we copy the rest of this. All right. So we have this, and you want me to strike number seven? Yep. Yep. And then the other point from me is number eight, where it says access to the Erie Canal must be improved. I think we say enough of that to where we just maybe have a more direct statement with what comes next. So ensure bike lanes and boulevards are safe to get families to the canal path, right? I don't think we need the first bit, even though it's true. Oh. Okay. I'm okay with that, if you want to simplify it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, rather than, I, I just want to make sure we're not continually trying to make the same point and we just say, these are the things you need to do. And keep in mind, this is on a map, by the way. Right. So we have these, so, okay, let me, let me step back. One of the challenges to this whole section is um, we're not, telling we're not making specific recommendations per se as much as we're saying these are our comments as to the map and so to what extent do we want to make a reference to that in the beginning right and how could they easily take these one through ten and, and put them into the map with a with a supplement and and i don't know Right away. I think that's on them. I think once they get the concepts, they'll figure yeah. out what to do with it. Okay, so then let's just leave it like it is. And but maybe make a point, maybe make a reference on page 84, you know, bike boulevards, you know, recommendations for consideration, uh, to map improvements, something like that. Or recommendations for map improvement. Uh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But, but this is the type of thing, Justin, like uh, like, uh, like you were saying before, I don't know what they're going to do with something like this. They, they, can't re, they can't go back and redo the map unless they paid for somebody to do it. There are people that do that. They could. Or they could maybe insert a couple things like, the bike boulevards all connect, here's how. <laughs> that read okay as an introductory sentence? Yes. What? Yeah. Good. Yep. 
Okay. And then they can do what they want with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, uh, I also questioned several points on page 86, if they were likewise, you know, kind of too general. Oh, yeah. I think similar to what we, to we just did with the other map, we say these are our concerns about this map and see what they do to address them. Because I think at the end, what we're trying to do is make sure that when we do the final LWRP that we don't surprise them with our findings. So, and, right, I think they're getting an idea from this. Yeah, I think so too. But this isn't plug and play like some of our other stuff. This is going to require them to say, do we do anything about it? And what yeah. do we do? Yeah. Okay. Um, so on page 85, is that the one we're discussing right now? Oh, no, we kind of skipped that one. And uh, actually, we're on 86, one and two. How about we, we do this one? Let me. Um, Where did my Word document go? Let me suggest a change here. First of all, whatever this is needs to go. Um, major roads, I think, need need either buffered bike lanes or wide shoulders. Uh, well, I don't know. What do we do? Yeah. I mean, if, if you make it 10 feet wide, then the shoulder's fine. What if, we just, what if we just stick to the NACTO guidelines? I know. I, I, I think the last sentence is an editorial. So just let the guidelines that they already reference do the work. Okay. Is this okay then where I added or wide shoulders? Sure. Okay, let me move that out of the way. So next, what are we on to? Justin, just going back to the or wide shoulders. Yep. I'd rather have a buffered bike lane than a wide shoulder. So why not just keep the wide shoulder out? If they're going to do it, let's see if they do buffered bike lanes. And if not, then maybe they resort to a buffered bike to a wide shoulder but by putting an or it gives them an option that i'd rather have them choose the former yeah i would agree with you that the buffered bike lanes are preferable to wide shoulders and um the i mean i'm okay it, it could be usable for a wide shoulder but it's much clearer if it's you know clearly delineated yeah so maybe just like we have it there i, I think that's good mm -hmm. Okay, so the next we're on all of these. So let me just copy and paste those. It sounds like there's a few changes to make. I just copy think that. take out the first two. I think they're just what too too vague. Yeah. Improve, improve. Yep. The rest are specific. Right. So remove one and two and renumber the rest. Before we remove one and two, though, where do we address that? Yeah, so before we remove those, uh, they are a little general, right? But it's general because they got to come up with a solution. So these are our editorials on a map that they didn't specifically address connectivity to schools nor address connectivity to the canal path. And wouldn't we want to keep them in there to highlight the fact that the map fails to do that? How about make connections? <laughs> sure. 
Yeah, I mean, we kind of say that on the Bike Boulevard section, don't we? And, and, uh, but we can emphasize it here. And So Justin, on, on three, a path from Pittsburgh Plaza to the village. I mean, there are sidewalks the whole way or you can take the Auburn Trail. Um, so something that was interesting I just noted today um, is there's um, there's a bicycle lane on Monterey Avenue disappears immediately before the bridge. A shoulder. So you know, I don't know what we wanna wanna say here, but. I should uh, let me let me find this picture. Food diet, shared lane marking. Ah, uh, yeah, that's weird. And just for those who are um, still following along, page eighty-five. What we just said before this page eighty-six thing. Major roads need buffered bike lanes. Well, the bicycle facility recommendations on page 86 call for what's uh, sh shared lane markings on South Main and uh, Monroe coming into state or coming into Four Corners. So there's a good chunk of the, the main drags through town that it suggests shared lane markings. And um, that's of course counter to our major roads need buffered bike lanes. Yes. So it, it it may be nice if the ATP was more aggressive, um, eliminating the shared lane markings for the major thoroughfares in the village, because that's not safe. Right. I agree. I can understand it on Washington Road, right, coming out of the village. That's kind of narrow with that meridian there already. I can understand it on French Road because it's so darn narrow, but heck, a sidewalk on that road would be nice. Would I rather have a bike lane or a sidewalk um, on uh, French? Which part? So there is, to Nazareth, there's sidewalk. Uh, French Road doesn't have much of a sidewalk, I don't think. I was walking on it the other night from, yeah, there's not much of it. So uh, French Road going west doesn't really have much of a sidewalk at all after maybe the first 100 yards. Going toward Nazareth? Uh, going towards Monroe. So There isn't yeah. any sidewalk, is there, Dave? I didn't think so. There's no, there's, no right. there's, there's there's a very little strip, like 50 yards mm -hmm. uh, of it, maybe. Mm -hmm. But it's, um, yeah, no, it was it was a little disturbing. So I, I've recently walked French Road and I've recently walked Gulf Ave at night, and uh, <laughs> neither one is particularly safe. Okay, this is what blew my mind. This is the approaching the Erie Canal Bridge. Which, where, from where, Justin? It's up on Earl Avenue. Uh, okay. So we're coming from Langman's into the village. And for the entire way, there is like a five foot wide shoulder, except right before the bridge. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't look safe. I'm so we had talked before about having some markings for someone to get down to the Erie Canal. Well, they also are in dire need of a sidewalk there. Or, um, so anyway, I was just pointing that out because that was that was pretty crazy. They do reference that as a road diet candidate, that area on this map on page 86. But as soon as what's funny though is that so that's a road diet candidate, right? And it's I think the road diet would include a bike lane, right? Hopefully. Isn't that, isn't that what the road diets entail? Mm -hmm. 
Not not sure. Me either. Uh, I'm saying... I think they in in the complete trees training that I went to, they talked they talked about road diets, and that some people talk to them, uh, refer to them as road buffets or something. It's not really just <laughs> narrowing down the road. It's it's actually a, a bunch of things like you know it could be sharrows or any of these other strategies that um, that make it more usable for pedestrians. All right, and I'm reading this from the active transportation plan right now, and what it suggests is a road diet will convert the target four lane roadway to two travel lanes in each direction with a center two way left lane. In many cases, there's remaining road space that can be used for a shoulder or a bicycle type facility. So at least, so Justin, still to your point, if they did the road diet up until that point, after that point, including the bridge, they show it as a um, shared roadway environment. We can go on and on with, with the challenges for bicyclists in the town. Yeah. Well, I guess I just don't want the active transportation master plan to have shared bicycle lanes for Monroe Ave to state and South Maine. I would rather have it be a dedicated bike lane than a shared bike lane. And right now, our point number, our point above this, page 85 point, says major roads need buffered bike lanes. So we should ask for them mm -hmm. to have those, uh, the map on page uh, 86 to address the shared lane markings to be either bike boulevards or uh, what would you call it, a dedicated bike lane, mm -hmm. even if it's just striping. I think a bike boulevard. Um, I think that's a good point, Dave. I, you know, this might go to some negotiation strategies that, you know, if we ask for a Shero, um, you know, that's fun to say. So I, I guess that's one reason that people might want to ask for a Shero. But um, if you ask for a Shero, that's all you're ever going to get. You probably won't get anything. But if you ask for a dedicated bike boulevard, maybe they'll give us a Shero. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I don't think there's a single person in the village who wouldn't agree that that's what they want. Right. It's everybody going through the village. So why would we why would we bend before we even ask, to your point? So right. So is, is this what we're asking for? I just created this number 10. Yeah. Uh yeah. yes, though the only thing there you might be asking, I even think you might be asking for a little too much on French Road and for Washington and for Mitchell. Right? If you can get if you can get a shared lane striping there um that's fine so for mitchell for washington for french shared lane markings are fine but for main street state and monroe it would be nice for those to be bike boulevards so was it washington french uh, road, mitchell. is it washington and, road graph i get the two computed in Washington Ave is the one that's perpendicular to Lincoln Ave. That's yeah, not the one you mean. No, this is Washington. Washington Road is the one that goes um, past uh, so Gulf okay. Avenue. Yep. Okay, I think that's the one. Mitchell, French. Because again, I, on French Road, I'd rather have a sidewalk than uh, a bike lane so just share it that's fine mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, Toby Road I don't know Toby Road well enough between uh, Macedon Center where 64 is and, and Macedon Center there's that little Toby Road area there that's probably fine for a shared bike lane too I doubt you'll get that separately striped my biggest concern yep. is for the the four corners roads it's not in the village anyway I don't think <laughs> People have been asking for a sidewalk, the Toby Road folks, for years. The French Road folks have probably too, right? Yeah, probably. Aren't they getting one? Isn't Toby Road getting a sidewalk? Uh, I think it's um, on the books. I think they're in. 
so, some I, I know one person on Toby Road and she complained about it. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's Took up go. some of her yard and she didn't like that. <laughs> oh, so what are we talking about main roads in the village? Yeah. Um our net um Mitchell Road, not Mitchell Avenue. Yeah. Hey kids, you guys going to bed? Yeah. We have our game. Can I get out? Come yeah, I know. I can't play tonight. I'll play in the Say goodnight to everybody. Good night, Good night, night Cray. Hi. Good night, Emerson. Hi. How cute. It's our best played game ever. Look at the counters online and look at Emerson's. All right, we'll see you in a bit. <laughs> All right, members of the public. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
And I was trying to look in the ATP if they mention anything about sidewalks on French Road. They, um, they say it is reasonable to have a Shero instead of a bike lane if there's not enough room. But if there is enough room, then there's no, it's not a substitute. And a Shero is the shared lane? Yep. There's, an e there's even a comment in the ATP that says French Railroad isn't safe for bikes and that we suggest an alternate route. Well, if that's how we feel, maybe we should put a sign up. <laughs> like when you're on Monroe and you're going to turn left on French, there should be a sign, not safe for bicyclists. <laughs> maybe we should just put a disclaimer on the front of the ATP that it's uh, to favor pedestrian safety, except in areas where pedestrians shouldn't even try going at all. <laughs> Call it the um, actively target pedestrian plan. <laughs> I think, Joanne, didn't didn't a Nazareth student actually get killed on French Road? It was I don't six, remember. It was I, I don't years. remember. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. It was some years ago, but yeah. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Uh, let's go back. We talked about that one. Um, you said you wanted some some kind of more declarative that this is important at the end. I, I think it's a, I think it's useful here because if if they pass the ATP with the shared lanes for the four corners there, we're never going to get bike lanes. I highly doubt we're going to steal back the right hand turning lanes if we want them. Um, I think you really have to hammer home on this with the uh, DOT. Mm -hmm. I've never talked to them before, only getting guidance from you guys. So um, to really kind of figure things out, um, I mean, getting a good traffic consultant would be really helpful. Um, I don't, I get the impression that people kind of make up the rules and requirements rather than follow rules and requirements. But I don't really know how things work. And no. preferences and requirements get intermixed. Well, wasn't it the LWRP that saved the trees on the canal for the town? Yeah, but also required a lawsuit. Right. I know, but it gave... Well, actually, gave... it wasn't the LWRP, it was a seeker. It was an environmental review. Is it expensive to file or is it just expensive to defend? I don't know. I mean, I think um, I think what, sometimes you've got to pick a fight with someone just so that they actually start working with you. And But that that's just my opinion. I see no reason why not the LWRP and the ATP should be pretty firm with the DOT and say, you're not following the LWRP, let's go to court over this. Give us give us your plan for the bridges. And if it's not suitable, let's see how strong the LWRP is. And maybe they back down, maybe they don't, but are they really gonna go to court to defend not putting a bike lane? Um, I think we have to wait until ARC retires. <laughs> Well, I don't disagree with that. I don't disagree with that. But but does that he's also retiring? He's retiring in a year, Susan. From when? I, I don't know. Bob just said he's retiring in a year, so maybe from now. Wow. I've heard it was the next month or two. Wow. Well, but who knows? All right, moving on. Sorry. Yep. Okay, so is is this thing uh, is this sentence needed? This it highlighted and just you know why don't you know bold it italicize it you know just make it stand out i would just say this is critical I, I i wouldn't necessarily even say to improve safety i mean just this is critical to the uh atp or to village objectives embedded in the atp just something um you don't narrow it by saying it being safety just okay we'll leave it as that they get the idea yeah okay the other two i amended were number one and two i like it yeah it's good yep good um we could add that basically this we could say that this is mandated by the lwrp uh Yes. Or, or not mention it. That's it's enough. It's clear enough as it is. Mm 
Uh, you could even start that sentence, you know, per LWRP policy. Right. right. <laughs> Policies or guidelines or whatever you want to put. Policies, good. Policies, yeah. 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 <laughs> it's a little stronger. Yeah. And I don't even think you have to say adjacent neighborhoods because what if it's somebody biking in from Henrietta and just put it to improve access? Well, I think it specifically mentions to improve access to adjacent neighborhoods, but yeah, whatever. What? How do we want to word this? Make connections to the Erie Canal path to improve access? Just period? Either one works for me. I don't care. Yeah, you're drawing on more insight from the uh, past than me, so. I said keep it as it is. Okay. All right, that's, all right, that's fine. Um, any of these others, are there any others that need? Um... Uh, the also after number three, where you got that underline, either put a comma after it or have it be its own number. Or you could just do a path from Pittsford Plaza to the village and from Pittsford Plaza to Nazareth is needed. Yeah. Pittsford to the uh, village and Nazareth. Yeah. Now, what, what type of path? Walk path, bike path? Doesn't matter path. Yeah, that was my question. Psycho path. Pickle path. Did you say pick a path or pickle path? Psychopath. Psychopath. <laughs> so there is a sidewalk, and I believe there is a bicycle lane on the shoulder, except for. Might we want to have a uh, is this referencing the boulevard? This is still page 86, right? The boulevards. So maybe what we're trying to say in these comments is have a dedicated path, bike path connecting those two. And right now we don't have that. Is that right? Plan trails, trails, conceptual trails, bike boulevards, share lane, bike boulevard, no. No diet, um, no diet candidate. No recommended improvements. Okay. Um, so this is, I think we are referencing here too, that they weren't making any improvements to East Avenue coming from St. John Fisher, and there was no improvements from Nazareth besides what's already there. So the question there is, would a bicyclist coming from St. John Fisher or Nazareth be on the road with a road diet, or would they be on the sidewalks? And I think our comment there was trying to encourage them to change the East Ave um, recommendation from no improvement to at, at a minimum a road diet candidate. I think that's what we were considering there. Do you guys remember that? Uh, we were talking about possibly having um, improving the stuff in the northwest quadrant and the um, uh, what's that other trail, the Auburn Trail, and um, going that way over towards Pittsford Plaza as an option. Yeah. Well, if you're not going to go on French Road because you didn't fix it up, you better go get there somewhere else. So French Road has no sidewalks and no bike lanes, correct? French Road has neither. 
And East Ave only has sidewalks, but no bike lanes. And right now they're not recommending any improvement on East Avenue. And this is where we might be encroaching a little bit on the town because the town might say, well, we got other focuses, so let's not you know, do anything there. We don't know that. But shouldn't the plan be kind of, I don't know, I just feel like a lot of that traffic could come through the village. And so why not try to encourage more bike lanes on East Ave and, and put our thoughts in here? I mean, what they should have done is made a nice wide sidewalk going down 96 that could accommodate both, but uh, that would have been nice. So is, how is this? I just added a few uh, the notes you made. So a path from Pitcher Plaza to the village and a path from Pitcher Plaza to Nazareth College is needed. What were you going to say, Susan? Um. Just East Avenue, you know, they just redid. Yeah. They they took out a lane, um, you know, and added and just had a center turning lane. So I don't think they're going to be in the mood to listen to, you know, East Avenue recommendations at this point. And there is a sidewalk. So that's yeah. like East Avenue. We're talking about 96 getting there. Oh no, there they do suggest a road diet candidate. But there is a sidewalk from Pittsburgh Plaza to the village. Yeah. On one side of Monroe Avenue. Right, so that's something. It's not on the other side, it just ends. At French Road, I believe it ends, and then there's no sidewalk from French Road to the Erie Canal. Yeah. So you can get to Wegmans, but you can't get back. <laughs> you just go on the same sidewalk. <laughs> How Wegmans wants it. <laughs> I think we can leave this as, as is. I mean, it gets our point across. Maybe there's a couple things in there they'll weed out and find of, of their liking. But again, I, I think sometimes here with these maps, they're going to gloss over this stuff probably more than we do yeah. in the interest of not updating it, regrettably. OK, is this OK for number three? So why say Route 96? What road is that? That's East Avenue. Part of East Avenue. Yeah. So when I was saying East Ave, I was thinking from St. John Fisher into the city or into the village, not East Ave uh, running east south on 96. Yeah. St. John Fisher and the village. Okay. Um, anyway, you want to say neither sidewalks nor bike lanes? I do have the sidewalks now. Yeah, sidewalks. Oh, it's yeah. just in the previous. Uh... I, I think what I'm trying to do here is say, in this oh, plan, you, we, there's a lot of do door. Um, more bike lanes. So the East Ave comment, just to come back to that, um, East Ave between St. John Fisher and the village uh, should include um, recommendations for bike lanes, or or yeah, you know, we recommend bike lanes between East Ave and St. John Fisher, something like that. Because again, I know they have a sidewalk, but if I'm a college kid and I'm going to St. John Fisher and I want to live in the village. Right now, I have to bike on a sidewalk or I have to bike on a road without a bike lane. I'd rather bike on a road with a bike lane if I'm ever going to do that. Right. And, and I'm not saying that it's going to happen quick, but over time, this document could take 10 years or more. And it would, sure would be nice 
And the other thing too, this is just long-term planning. If this document's gonna be on our records for 20 years, in the next 20 years, we're gonna have cars driving themselves. And when cars are driving themselves, bicyclists are gonna feel safer. I think, I would. But importantly, you're gonna need striping for that. And you're gonna need bike lane striping for that. And that's why I think it's really critical to get right here. Uh, um, another area that, yeah, I agree with you on that. Another one that I was looking at was Route 65, which goes to Minden Ponds Park and happens to go right past the Erie Canal and one of the parks there. And I looked at it and I'm like, this is nuts. People have to, if they want to go for a bike ride with their kids and they live uh, three doors down from the park, they got to go put their bikes in their car, go drive to the park quarter mile, take their bikes out and then go for a ride. That just doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Um, so, but I think that's mostly true of a lot of the roads in the town is they have fairly narrow shoulders on most of them. You're, they're not a place you'd want to take with your family. Fearless riders would, would do it, but um, that's about it. Well, in many respects, regrettably, so many of the high residential areas within the town were built with the crazy roads that go nowhere concepts. So most of the kids bike in these roads that go nowhere and they don't feel the necessity to bike on main roads to actually get places. I don't know if that's true. I feel like that might be true. Well, how do you get, oh, that's right. If you, you just ask your parents to bring you somewhere in their car. That's, that's how you right. get places. Yeah, yeah, you got these like little desert communities that have one access point and 50 roads inside that Look like a spaghetti mess, which I got lost on two of those, by the way, trying to get to Genesee Country Village. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to run out of battery soon. Can we? Uh... My yep. computer's not, but I am. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, we're good there. I Do just move on from this one yeah we've we're almost done with this document okay. yep. yeah i didn't really have anything until the 92 um, Woodland Drive is Woodland Road, I believe. The third 87 down. Right. It is. Yep. That's confirmed. So what's the change here? Page 80, on the page 87, uh, mark the route, uh, the second sentence, the route along Woodland Drive should change to Woodland Road. Okay. the road the um, shoulder um, with it I think it ends the right is it ends right by 3750 Monroe or is it French Road? What 
do you mean the shoulder has gaps? Shoulder is gone. Or sorry, the shoulder, uh, or there is no shoulder. No shoulder or sidewalk. That's, yeah, okay. No, that's good. Okay. And so then, Justin, you had something at 92? Yeah, if we're going down there, I don't know if anybody else has. Okay. I don't have any comments on those letters. Yeah, I was all set. Can I scroll down? Sure. Yep. Yeah, other than the uh, the stray characters, um, I, I think this is a, a really great point. Um, I, I read through that section about emergency services, um, and I, I think that we should specify uh, what some of the problems are. The, the fire department has said, well, we can't do certain things because our equipment is too big, but I don't think that any um, there's a very, very small amount of citizens, if any, who know that they can go to the fire department and complain about the huge fire trucks they're buying. Um, and I, I think that, you know, it's it's a political issue. I, I think a lot of the elected officials aren't going to want to bring that up. Um, but I, I think that you need to bring awareness to that kind of issue in, in a document like this, that that stands in the way of, of making uh, walkability improvements. The other thing they can do is that they say, well, you know, we can actually achieve both goals, pedestrian friendliness and um, uh, having efficient emergency responses. Um, but I, I think the point can also be made that if you make the, the village more walkable, then you need to respond to fewer incidents. Mm -hmm. And um, they, don't, they don't really make that point quite forcefully enough. But I, I think, you know, you're, you're oh. totally right. They need to bring up the, the issue of size of equipment and that kind of thing. Yeah. So how should this be changed? I guess I'm uh, maybe just in the first sentence, specify the concerns of emergency services um, and how choices of, uh, and how choice of equipment um, is related to pedestrian improvements. Something like that, you know, and what if we left out choice of equipment and just said and how they relate to pedestrian improvements? Sure. And how equipment relates? Just put how they relate. So instead of choice of equipment, leave it yeah. more open ended. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. they're going to have concerns about speed, they're going to have concerns about traffic patterns, they're going to have concerns. Because if we take four corners and bring it down to one lane, they're going to have a concern about that. Uh -huh. right? If we put bike lanes everywhere, they're going to have concerns about that. So I, I would just say concerns of emergency services and how they relate instead of related to pedestrian uh -huh. improvements. Yeah, why I mean, ultimately. Say, sorry. Oh, no, why, why not say the fire department? Mm -hmm. Well, it's not just the fire department, it's also ambulances. <laughs> Is it so ambulance? the ambulances don't like speed bumps while they're giving CPR to somebody. <laughs> I, would, I sort of have a point, but I'd also say, how many times is an ambulance driving down my street uh, only to hopefully service people on my street? Well, if pedestrians are more active, then they would need to have CPR less often, potentially. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Oh, you're stretching, Jess. That's, yeah. that's a correlation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think I would leave it at that and get rid of that A with the tilde type E thing over. It's not a tilde, I don't know, accent mark. Um, I don't know. There, there are always some mysteries with cut and paste. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's when you go from Google to yeah. Word to anything else. Yeah, it's yeah. hard. That's that's why I like to have Microsoft Word. Is the well, if you have the same person with the same software, it works. Uh, I've never found Open Office to be able to edit Word documents properly and screws things up. And Google's its own thing, so going between them all stinks. Yeah. I'm okay keeping page 93 comment about the three E's. I doubt they'll keep it, but sure. At least we made a point. Mm -hmm. now, Maybe the quotation mark can go away, but that's okay. Talking about, um, oh, never mind, never mind. I'll defer. Sorry. Okay, so it sounds like we're done with this document. Fantastic. Very good. So I will. Susan, I will email this to you right now. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm sure you will not be working on it tonight. No, probably not. Probably not. But first thing in the morning. Justin, I like Deb. I just want to ask you a question. You had sent that link to some really great work that you had done referencing all the different policies within the LWRP. That was that was mostly Justin Bleister's notes. Oh, um, okay. Do we want to forward that on with just sort of a subheading, additional conversational notes and elements to consider? Or do we want to leave that internal? I'm mean, not that it's not public, but. Well, right now it's not been shared with anybody. It's in draft form. Um, it hasn't been published. Do we want to? have the trustees see that before tomorrow night or do you think that what we're putting in front of them right here is sufficient for our initial response i think either we send it or, or we have another meeting to discuss it i don't know if everyone's read it yet and how many comments people had it basically it was notes from our discussion in our, our meeting are you talking about the uh the um bike lane recommendations no the other document the one on the lwrp oh yeah. oh then i think we that that should wait right i think with another meeting to discuss it it would be beneficial i think all right so the question that i have um just in terms of getting this document to the board before tomorrow night. To what end, when we forward this document, would we be, um, would they think that this is the, the depth of our discussion and might they have a discussion about the ATP independent from our LWRP notes? Or do you think that this is um, sufficient for just the ATP and then we delay the LWRP additional comments until we review those a week from now or so? Well, our public hearing is a week from now. Okay. So, um, all right, whoops, it's my email. But uh, anyway, um, so Susan, I already sent you the document. Mm -hmm. If anyone else wants a copy, let me know. Um, if we want to review the other documents together, then we should review the other documents together. And if we have a public hearing for Monday, um, I think it makes sense to try to get these out there beforehand. To get, get which to get which these out out where? 
Okay, well, I think the ATP notes, it sounds like as soon as you revise those, they're ready to go out. So those will definitely go out. That's so right. the other two documents are LWRP notes, and then there's those that bicycle lane width document. And I, I don't know what anyone wants to do with the bicycle lane width document. It was, um, I just sent that out before the meeting, and it was kind of summary of a whole bunch of code and requirements to try to figure out what I thought they should be and what code says about it. Um, my basic concern is I think there's a lack of interest in actually making the um, bicycle lane system usable and safe for average users. And it, my concern is just it's being said as, hey, we worked on this rather than we made it functional. So um, I don't see the point in a plan if it doesn't actually make a functional system. And there are some improvements, but I just really think people could aim higher. So, so. So I guess so, the question is, do you want to have a meeting on, say, Friday? I can't, but you're welcome to proceed. I'm um, up campaign in the Adirondacks. Okay, and uh, I think that you know, would be the soonest we could have it. So if we can't make it, then I guess we'll have to wait till Monday. Well, you guys can proceed if you feel. Fine. The other thing that we could do, and this is this was I've read through that those notes, and um, I think those notes carried in a lot of our conversation pretty cleanly. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't think between the five of us there's a lot of disagreement. And to me, I think what we don't want to do is surprise the board per se, nor necessarily you know, delay getting the information to them if there's things that they can constructively move forward on in advance. I don't necessarily think we have to wait for the public hearing until we release those notes. Is there any benefit to us reviewing these notes offline and just saying if there's any additional comment to add and then getting them in the hands of the trustees sooner and not necessarily going through them line by line? Because this is an actual code that's going to get written. It's just our notes and our comments and our thoughts. You're talking about the LWRP notes, is that right? Yeah, yeah, that link that Justin Lakeham sent on our chat. But but the other thing we could do is say this is a document in progress, this is the current draft of it, and it's subject to revision. I kind of like that approach better so the trustees have something to think about sooner rather than later. And yep. it, it kind of goes to Justin Lakeham's comment basically countering my point last week when I was thinking and kind of delay and hold it. And this is sort of, hey, here's our first draft. We're continuing to revise this, but this is where we are right now. It's the software philosophy of releasing early and releasing often. Let's uh, shoot it out there. <laughs> yeah, well, that goes along with um, an initial release that's buggy and doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> it may be, but we're not going to find out until we run it. Right. But I, I guess I'm of the mindset to try to let the trustees, maybe they already do because you guys have had some conversation, I don't know, but to, to let them know that we have some serious concerns about, you know, the points. And if we, if we take these notes of the LWRP and we combine them with what we're about to send them here, um, specifically those comments about connectivity to the canal, they're going to see more of that depth of character in terms of how we arrived at why that's so important in these notes. And if you give it to them separately, it, it doesn't really carry the same degree of weight, I don't think. That's a good point. Um, I don't have a problem sharing it with them and say that um, we're still working on the document. Uh, so, um... How is this different than our findings? For we haven't the, written them yet. This is our just initial notes and comments. Then they can, if we if we have a public hearing, if someone wants to say something or say we really think these are off mark or we really can't do this because it's not practical for this reason or that, yeah, uh, you know, they they can always explain why it is the way it is, and that goes a long way sometimes. Right. So my only concern is that. Uh, we have been operating in a, in a workshop 
And these are very specific LWRP recommendations and should have that should that have been conducted in a open meeting, public meeting. It has been. And you want these are, I, I would consider this like a draft of meeting minutes. You know, we, we haven't even approved them yet, but. Right. I mean, this LWRP was never on an agenda. It's been on every agenda. Yeah, a workshop, the workshop. And a, a workshop and a meeting is the same thing. It just says ATP. I think. Yeah. If it, uh, I thought it just said ATP. Oh. Hope I'm, let's, hope see I'm what it says. Uh, let's see. Tonight's agenda is the ATP, mm -hmm. which is all we've done. Uh, it just says a review of the active transportation plan. And that is our review, is the LWRP review. Yeah. Do the ATP. I mean, we're not making decisions based on the LWRP. We're using that as a set of conditions by which to review the ATP. You know, the, the public hearing is still uh, going to explicitly be about the LWRP. So I think if... I, I don't feel like it's too much of a stretch since there are no decisions rendered for us to prepare for a review of that um, document. Yeah, well, here's how I, I see it is we uh, have meetings. Um, they're open. We had Renee attend one and we gave her ample opportunity to talk about some background behind things and some of her thoughts. She asked, hey, do we have any questions or comments? And we said, no, not at this time. We're listening right now. We're still going through it. Now we have comments and we send them along. Uh, so if normally with an applicant, we'd share all these kind of things forthright in a meeting, but it's kind of difficult at times. Hmm. Okay. So I see Susan's point. She's saying that it was really, LWRP was really never published as what we were doing, even though it was, that's what we were, I mean, what else would we be doing with the ATP? We we're reviewing it for the LWRP, but we really never said that. So is that going to be a problem? I uh, question for you. Let's say there's a proposal that comes up for a, a development and we're reviewing the development. On the night that we review the LWRP as part of that development, do we have to say that's part of the review that we're doing at that time, or do we just simply say we continue to review the development? If you're doing an LWRP consistency review, then you then that needs that needs to be noticed. Yes. Okay. It, so that, uh, it is noticed for our next meeting. Right. Right. So I'm just asking, do we want to? have all these notes go right. out um before before the other before it's noticed if yeah. if you guys are okay with that want to give the trustees a uh, uh, heads up i'm i'm kind I'm okay of waiting. i i don't know enough of the policy to to feel strongly so if if any one person's concerned i would default to that one concern personally so I mean, that makes sense. If someone is reluctant to put it out there, then we should probably just agree not to put it out there. Yeah, I'm fine with that. So is someone reluctant to put it out there? Well, it sounds like Susan yes. is, you know, yes. she's, I'm, I'm not a lawyer. And, and uh, so since we don't have an attorney here, I think that if there's some question, it would be a more, con uh, more conservative approach to keep those notes to ourselves. Yep. Yeah. You know what? Um, uh, I know a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> we could give Mindy just a, a quick call tomorrow. Well, right. well, at the end of the day, just to step back. So at the end of the day, right, This is the entirety of all of our meetings are public. So everything that we've ever done as part of the ATP and the LWRP and trying to go back and forth and see how it all fits together, all of that's public. 
we have notes pertaining to that. It's just a question of whether or not the release gives it some degree of um, weight differently than the discussion itself. And I, one argument would be it does, and another argument would say it doesn't. Um, again, I don't think we need to decide if there's any concern. It sounds like there's enough of it. I would just say let's not. Let's send forward the ATP comments that we have here, wait for Monday, and then proceed from there. I mean, if they l read these notes and, and you know, read, um, you know, the page 11 where we talk about the LWRP very specifically, um, you know, and it's mentioned in a couple other areas, um, I think they'll get the drift. Um, <laughs> And the, the other thing is, you know, our um, our hearing uh, starts next week, right? Yep. When and that's when the sixty day uh, um, window opens. Is that right? Uh, sixty day window started, I think, in uh, whenever they forwarded it to us. Um, was that early July? Yeah, I think it was mid-July even. Might have been late June. Oh no, it might have been July. That's right, because they it may have been mid-July. So we started talking about it before they did the referral, and I think it yeah, may July have been seventeenth. We got the yeah. email from Linda. Yeah, July seventeenth. So all we need to do is respond to them within the sixty-day period of time. It does. We don't actually have to do the LWRP review. We just have to respond to them, right? Well, we did that before, and that didn't go so well. Okay. So if you guys want to uh, send along the notes. Um, 14th of July. Right. Yeah. I say let's not. I don't think there's a necessarily a reason within a one-week period of time that we're going to give them so much additional opportunity for discussion that my comments I'll rescind and let's just wait a week. Yeah, I don't I mean, think it's a huge it, deal in a week. You know, there's nothing that, you know, precludes any of us, you know, to giving, you know, Renee or someone a heads up um, about the LWRP. Yeah. We're gonna have a full discussion, I suspect Will there be at least one board member present next Monday night for our meeting? Who knows? Who knows? Okay. Well, maybe we should invite um, them. So I told Renee and Bob earlier today that um, we we're working on notes for, of um, ATP notes and um, LWRP notes to send along so they could look at them on Tuesday and we're having a public hearing uh, the following week. So if we send something along, that's great. Um, ideally we send it all along, but we want to make sure it's good first. So, so uh, I mean, maybe what we should do is carry this offline and um, someone could talk to Mindy in the morning. Susan, do you want to talk to Mindy in the morning? Sure. If, if our only objection is legal, and I, that's the only objection that I can see, I, I don't, you know, this is basically what we talked about at the meetings. Um, you know, maybe we could say conditionally upon Mindy's uh, approval that this isn't going to cause issues, we forward it along or something. So, so we'll forward it along, state it's a draft document um, where, you know, if they, someone wants to address it, we will revise things. Okay. Yeah, I'm okay with that. If Mindy says it's fine, and yeah, I'm good. Either way, I'll defer to you guys. And so, Susan, you're going to talk to Mindy and just see if it's okay if there's any reservation, and we'll go whatever direction she might suggest. Yeah, I'm going to ask her if some preliminary notes. Uh, you know what? I can hear Mindy. Why? Why send something that's preliminary and you might change it? Probably. Well, I think my answer is because we're in the middle of a pandemic and we don't have applicants in front of us to directly talk to. No, but the question is the notes can be, we may make changes. So why send out something that- Why send it before? 
And, and that's where, to your point, Susan, I don't think a week is going to change a whole lot between what the board does between now and then. They know we have our um, public hearing next week. Right. Yeah. We're moving forward, which is better than they've done for the last three years. So. Okay, so it sounds like. Uh, so okay. you talk to Mindy anyway, but it sounds like right now the plan is to um, keep these notes internal and we'll we'll discuss it at our meeting next week. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I think that's a, I'm, I'm much happier with that. Yeah, me too. Okay. Let's not even ask Mindy then. Okay. Yep, sounds fine. All right. Well, if that's it, I think that's. I think we're done for tonight. Finally, it's been a long meeting, but uh, we we got some something accomplished. So that's good. We got our first notes released yeah. down, and yeah. it's better for the process. Yeah. Yeah, that was really, really good. Really, really good. I know we're getting more fast, but we usually get things done pretty well. So. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> okay, I'll second that. Hi. I'm Hi. okay. Hi. Hi. <laughs> All right, let's let record show there's a unanimous motion to adjourn at 9 p.m. Okie doke. All right, thanks, everybody. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you next Monday. <laughs>